In this video, I'm going to discuss how you can solve a bigger range of trigonometric equations, and those are the ones that involve a restricted domain, and restricted domain also in includes uh, negative domains, and uh, those that also have uh, coefficients in the trig argument. So I didn't know exactly how to title this, um, but hopefully um, it will be clear throughout the video. So. I would assume you know how to solve simple trigonometric equations and maybe more complex ones um, from other previous videos. This is more of the uh, jumping in the next step. So um, this is a general form of a trig equation. It works the same for the other trig um, functions. Um, not equation, I mean functions. And this is how we set it up if we want to know what's happening to the graph, for example, so any graph translations. But it also tells us a lot of information about the period, about the amplitude, and any vertical horizontal shifts. So uh, what I'm interested in here is this B. So this B affects your period. So it tells you how often your function is going to repeat within the, two, within the 360 or 2 pi cycle. Um, but you need to know that b has to be factored out. So it has to be in a way that x has a coefficient of 1 here. So for example, if you have sine 2x plus 1, you have to factor out this 2, um, get the x to have a coefficient of 1, and then you can say that the period is 1. Sorry, this is 1 over 2 because we factor 2 out. And then your c is, uh, your negative t is just the, your c is 1 over 2 for negative 1 over 2. Um, so this factoring out actually helps you with the c, but keep on doing it so that you can guarantee you have an accurate b, but in general it's always that coefficient. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to find, is to solve these two types of questions, it's always a three same step, so you're going to find the period, and the period can be found by taking 2 pi divided by b, so this b, or if you're working in degrees, it's 360 divided by b. And then what you're going to do is just solve for theta, like I've done in the previous videos. And then once you reach to the end, you have a list of solutions, two thetas, three, four thetas, whatever, um, usually two if you're in 360, two pi. And then you're going to add uh, and or subtract, so it depends on the period that we found here, to all the solutions. And we want to make sure we stick within the domain. So the subtract usually comes if you have a negative domain. Now, I have been trying to explain this using only algebra and not using period shifts, but to be honest, this is the best way to explain it. I'm also going to show how these solutions work on a graph. So if, it's, if it is a calculator paper, for example, these are much easier to solve on a graphic calculator. But assuming there are no calculators, that's how I'm going to solve them. So um, the first question is going to actually involve a... Um, negative domain. So what I'm going to solve is cos 3x equals to root 3 over 2. I didn't want anything complicated. If there was anything complicated, you know how to shift things around. But I want to solve this for negative 180 until 180. So what this looks like on a normal cosine graph, I'm not graphing this 3x, I'm just graphing the cos x. Um, so we have negative 1 and 1. Um, let's say this is our 90, our 180, negative 90, and negative 180. So what the negative 180 means is that we're going this way as well. So um, what you have is there. And then this is the property of uh, trig ratios, uh, trig functions that are nice, is that they're symmetrical in their graph. Um, so I have kind of identical solutions on the negative side. So what we're going to solve is this for now. So let's just ignore this. But what I wanted to show is that we're going to be subtracting to get to this side of the solutions. Now, what we're going to do is just solve for theta or solve for x, x in this case. Uh, ignore this for now um, but before that I said the first step was to find the period so the period is taking whatever the coefficient here is there's no c um, value here so it's just this b so it's 3 and I'm in uh, 360 so 360 divided by 3 and I get 120 
So what this basically means is that within the 360, um, my, my function is going to repeat three times. So this cost curve is going to repeat three times and it's going to restart the cycle exactly at 120. So it's going to go, this is one, and this is two, and this is three. So this is the 120, and that's when it repeats. So this is what it basically means, which means we won't only get two solutions, we'll get a, a couple of solutions here. Like anyway, we're going to negative 180. So next we're going to solve, and we're going to solve it for x. So if I solve this, um, you should know these exact values, and you're going to get 30 and then you have x is equal to 10. Um, now, 10 is just your, um, so keep in mind when you're solving, you're solving for causes positive here. So if it's positive, we're looking at the first quadrant and we're looking at the fourth quadrant. So this is my first quadrant solution. My fourth quadrant solution is 360 minus this 10 degrees, which will give me 350. Okay, great, I got to my solutions, but these are the solutions from zero to one to 360. My domain is from negative 180 to 180. Now this is where these functions are a bit different. Um, now whether you have this um, three in there or not, um, the steps are always the same. Even if the period didn't change, if the period was still 360 and your domain is a bit larger, what you're going to do is you're going to keep on subtracting 360 or adding 360. So just whatever your period is, maybe your period is still 360. Right now our period is 120. So what we're going to do, because we want to go up to a negative 180 and also we want to catch all the solutions possible, we're going to add and subtract this 120 to both solutions and just make sure that we're within the domain. Now 350 is not in our domain but we can't just discard it as a solution so we're going to keep on using it. So we're going to go, um, let's pick, um, how do we set it up? So 10 degrees, uh, what I'm going to do is just 10 degrees plus 120 and 10 degrees minus 120 so I have the 10 degrees plus 120, I have 130. I'm still within the domain, so just keep in mind that these are part of our original solutions, but still not the solutions. Um, so this is good. Can I add another 120? Let's try. So I'm going to add another period. So remember the 120 is our period. Um, so if I add another 120, I'm going to get... Um, 250 and 250 is already outside of our domain so not a solution so this is a solution and this is not a solution and then I have 10 degrees minus that it's okay we need to go to a negative so I have a negative 110 and that is within the the domain of negative 180 and then I could do it again, and just to check that I get another solution or not. And if I do that, I do not get to, um, I'm, I'm going to be out of the domain, so I don't need to check that. I will go beyond 180. So we got two solutions from doing this. So let's try with the 350 as well. Um, so for the 350, you could obviously tell that you can't, add 120, we're already above the domain. So what we're gonna do is go 350 minus 120. You can do this in a more systematic way, but um, minus 120. If I added 120, I'm at 470, I'm already out of the domain. This is gonna give me 230, which is still out of the domain, so still not a solution, but let's go lower, minus 120. And that's gonna give us um, 110. That is within our domain. Again, subtract 110. Uh, minus 120, negative 10, still within our domain, and um, negative 10 minus 120, and that's going to give us one negative 130. So still within the domain. If I do another one, I will be out of the domain, so I'm just going to stop there. So we have one, two, three, 
four, five, and six. So let me just highlight them with a different color. So our solutions are this 10, 130, negative 110, 110, negative 10, and negative 130. And um, they are within the domain if you check. And if you've gone any further or lower, then you wouldn't have reached the domain. Just make sure you do it in a nice organized way. So you're always adding and subtracting uh, the two the solutions you found. So let's just see what that looks like on a graph. So I have cost, I have cost three X. And I want to know, basically what you're going to do is always write one side in a Y and then the other side in the other Y. So root 3 over 2, root 3 over 2. And I'm in, a, I'm in degrees already, uh, which means I'm just going to set my window. I want my window to be from negative 180. Let's just add a bit more so that we can actually see the 180 and let's just go to 270 as well I have 45 scale um, we can keep the y as such so so the the 180 is actually here and you can see that it repeats um, the, the cycle repeats at different, um, so it repeats at exactly 120. So what happens here is um, within the 180, to, negative 180 to 180, we will have six solutions. And those are, um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And these are the intersections. So this will be the negative 130. So this is our 120. Uh, negative 130. This is the 180. And you can see at 180, the, the red and the blue line don't intersect. So we don't have solutions the first time it intersects is here. So negative 130, negative 110, negative 10, 10, 110, and 130. So these are our solutions. And you can check them by going second, calculate, and then do, going to intersection. Um, so that's another way of checking your answers to this. So the second part of the video will go more into this um, and just, um, but we're still going to use the same three steps. So finding the period, solving for theta, adding or subtracting based on your domain.